now it's recording again. <laughs> Welcome back, those online. Uh, once you log back in, uh, give online if you can. <laughs> follow the, the website, www.badgerbaptist.simplesite.com. Uh, just follow the links for giving, uh, as always. But you came back at a perfect time because we're getting ready to worship in our prayer time. So, next slide, please, Christian. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do our worship through prayer. Uh, I'm sure we have plenty of prayer requests. I know uh, uh, I saw we've got a praise report. I'm going to steal it from Willie. Uh, Drew's here. We prayed for Drew last week. I remember Drew took a little tumble and had to go see the doctor for a few times. And uh, But look at it. He's here with a smile and ready to go. And already saying, sign me up for authentic manhood. Look at that. So, we got that praise report. And... Uh, I also know that, so we got a praise report for Drew, and I know that Drew's son had to be taken to the hospital down in the cities uh, for, for for his reasons. All we all we do, all we need to do is pray for his son. Yep. So. Uh, and my sister's back to work, and she's over COVID. And yes, and look at that, his sister back to work. And she thanks everybody. For the prayers. Good stuff. I got two more praise reports I want to put down, which I'm going to steal from people probably. But number one, Joyce is here. So that's a praise report. And number two, I see a Rachel Hill. Yes. Yes. And now we will get to the prayer request. Yes. So praise that she's here and let's just continue to keep her and the kids in prayer. But it is good to see you, Rachel. It was good to see you online last week, but it's even better to see you live this week. I miss my church family. Well, hey, we missed you too. Uh, my sister Joyce. She's doing better. Well, and 
you guys sad because they're constantly worried about me because they even thought about it a couple mm. weeks ago. You were definitely too thin on purpose. Miss Joyce. And King's not back. <coughs> and Mark Cancer has not come back. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's where kids usually are. <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't believe that because, you know, the, I think that's the, the two days that he came by the house, that was the most interaction I think I've ever actually had with just Eric. Yeah. And he, he's got some, he's full of personality. Yes, he is. He's full of personality. So, but that's a good thing, isn't it? Praise God. Gordon? I want to keep my youth kids in the prayer. Uh, let them keep spreading the good word. Uh, hopefully, so far, our youth group's gone from four to what we got now, eight, six, I don't know, I think about eight kids now, and multiplication is multiplication, right, yeah. so let's pray that we continue to grow, amen, yeah, I, I, I saw the same thing when you, when you spoke up, Gordon, I went down there for whatever I went down for last week and see all those, I was blown away, it was like two tables full of <laughs> kids, and it was like, praise the Lord, keep awesome. on coming, so. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Job, get, keep inviting. Yep. Miss Gordon? Yeah. <laughs> As you know, we're traveling. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray for you guys. Uh, Cliff and Gloria are bugging out for the winter. <laughs> <laughs> you got tired of it. Safe travels, you guys. <laughs>
You are just going to bring strength to her family. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we just thank you right now for joy. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that, that, that even though she's doing better, Lord, we just pray that you continue to, to heal, you continue to comfort, you continue to guide and direct and, and be there in those, those times at night where things seem bleak. Lord, I just pray right now that you will be there as a guide and a comforter, a, 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 an ever-present help in our time of trouble. Lord, for Lily, we thank you that her family relationships are, are getting better, Lord. We, we, we thank you that she will continue to have victory, that, that even though sometimes it feels like she may stumble and fall, but she is making the right choices and the wise choices. And as she's listening to that voice, that still small voice of you in her heart, or for her friend's mom who needs prayer for help, or we just lift her mom up and for prayer for help for her. Lord, for James and Sarah, Lord, for her, her, her mom and, and her, her, her new mom and dad, Lord, we just pray right now for, for health for them, for for strength for their relationship as it starts to grow and it starts to embark on new journeys and new situations and, and the, the new understandings that they're going to have to have. Give them the grace to understand what needs to change and what needs to be what needs to be, be fixed and still on work. But also, Lord, strengthen their bodies. Or bring health and healing to their bodies. Lord, we praise you for, for Linda's PET scan coming back clean. We thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. We thank you, Lord, for softened hearts and for for seeing you move in her life. Lord, we pray for Bob's dad and the, the throat cancer. Lord, we just pray right now for comfort and healing for the family. Lord, we pray for healing for his body, however that may be, Lord, however your will would be. But even more importantly, Lord, we pray that someone would come into his path, that he, whether it be Bob who would have the words or, or someone else who, that his father would listen to would have the words to speak the gospel, the good news of the spiritual and emotional healing that could come through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that you are providing that way for Bob's dad. Lord, we just pray for the Hill family and continued patience as they, they go through this new endeavor in life with Eric during the school year. Lord, for all the challenges and, and situations that they can find themselves in, Lord, I pray that you continue to strengthen them by the power of your Holy Spirit to give them patience and guidance. Lord, for our student ministries, Lord, as they grow, I pray, Lord, that you, you give our students... The, the, the understanding of, of what they're involved in, the understanding of the importance of the situation they're in. Lord, we thank you that they are growing. Lord, but as they grow, we pray, Lord, that, that you grow the, the, the strength in Gordon's heart, that you grow Gordon even stronger in you, Lord, so he can deal with the differences and the changes, Lord, and that you bring different people and different voices into our congregation who can also assist Gordon and speak into the students, that someone that he can tag in when things sometimes get rough. Lord, for Cliff and Gloria, as they get ready to head off to Texas, Lord, for their annual trip, Lord, we just pray for safe travels for them. We pray for a, a, an amazing time of fellowship and getting away, Lord. But Lord, we also pray for that wonderful day when, when we get to see them again when they come back. Lord, refreshed, ready to hit the ground running and start anew. And Lord, finally for Patty, that, that things will settle down at work, that things will get back to where they're supposed to be, that that she can get her life back on track. Lord, we pray for healing for employees, for family members, for, for grandparents, for, for whatever situations are coming up that are causing things to fall behind. Lord, we just pray right now that, that you will step in and intervene and a change will come in that situation. Lord, we just lift up our nation as we deal with, with, with unrest and uncertainty when it comes to elections and, and, and COVIDs and, and all these things. Lord, I, I just pray right now that you allow us to filter our eyes and our hearts and our mind and our spirit through the power of your Holy Spirit to where we see you. Lord, don't let us be distracted by the noise around us, but let us be laser focused on your will and your kingdom. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that even science now has to say that the only healthy people in America today are those who go to church. Amen. Lord, I thank you for it. Lord, I thank you that you are using this time to show up and show off in your church. And you are allowing us to be a part of it. Lord, as we continue with this message today, I pray that it reaches open hearts, open minds. Lord, I pray that the word will be implanted in their heart. And it will bring up a, a harvest of glory for you to reap. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a prayer request we got on from Pastor Joel, uh, the pastor in Texas. Mm -hmm. 
given his life were exposed to court than just given. Oh, oh, you, you know what? Also, let, let, let add this. So for those of you who, especially our prayer warriors during the week, uh, I, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, Barb's pastor. Oh, Hugh Hughlin. They're in Bemidji, right? At a nursing home. Oh. Okay. Uh, let me see here. They're both in their 90s. Uh, let me let me pull up the the post that I received the information. That's what sometimes you get so many things. Uh, Raynard Huglin and oh. Balborg Huglin. Yeah, I know them. Uh, they're they're in Crookston. Oh, Crookston, uh, five sixteen Wall Street, room two fifteen and two sixteen. So I believe they did have COVID, is what I believe. He did, she did. Yeah, yeah, he did. So, so yeah, so we'll continue to keep them in prayer as well. Yeah, that was Pastor Erling Hugo's brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so, so my prayer warriors, keep them in your prayers as well. Because we know God will do amazing things. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Christian, hit the next slide. Think it, okay, this is my special announcement. Uh, <clears throat> we are going to beta test Zoom church next week. That does not give you a, an excuse not to come to church next week. <laughs> <laughs> this is for those of you watching online right now and those of you who follow us on Facebook who might want to, to be involved and involved deeper than just the Facebook live feed. Uh, we are going to beta test. We're looking for four to eight people who would be willing to uh, sit in front of their laptop, their tablet, their whatever, with their camera on, their microphone on, and log in for two hours next Sunday, and uh, actually be a part of the church. Uh, we'll be able to talk to them. You guys will be, if you, we, Michael has already said he wants to do it. So when you see Michael from Canada on the TV, you can wave to him. He can wave back to you. He can say, he can see you. You can see him. So it takes our Facebook Live and it amps it up because it actually creates interaction because they're actually in, involved in the service. So we are going to uh, work on launching that this week, but we're looking for four to eight people who are willing to do that next week. You will have to have Zoom on your, uh, on your device or ability to get the Zoom, so you need a good internet connection. Uh, disclaimer, uh, it's a two hour, it will be for two hours because it's a regular church service. So hopefully you have good Wi-Fi or you have unlimited data because if not, you're gonna end up probably paying through your service. So Wi-Fi, of course, would be the best option to do it. But we do want you to have your, at least your camera turned on so we can see you, you can see us. Uh, you can mute your microphone during praise and worship if you don't want us to hear you sing. <laughs> but you know what, if you want it, but th if, you, if you feel like shouting amen during part of the service, unmute it and let us hear it. Let us be encouraged that you're being encouraged at the same time. So if that interests you, just here on the church's Facebook page, just send us in the comments or in, on Messenger uh, your email address, and we will, once we get it all established, we will email you the Zoom link that you would use to log in for this Sunday. So prayerfully, again, this goes to that thing about people who have gone to church regularly have the highest rates of mental health in the United States right now. So let's make more opportunities for people to come to church. Amen. Right? So, so that's the thing. Yeah. Utilizing the TV instead of it just sitting back there in the corner. So, uh, also with Zoom Church, for those of you who might be interested, uh, our Sunday night master classes, we may try to Zoom those as well so you can participate. We'll actually move the whiteboard right here and lock off this side of the church so everybody would sit on this side and for the, the, the Sunday night master classes so that way the person on TV could see what's going on on the board. They can interact, they can ask questions just like everybody else. So, again, ways to Bring more people in instead of excluding people and shutting people out. So, all right. So now with that, let's get to the heart of the matter. Uh, I am going to start a series this week uh, going into Christmas. And I titled it, and, and you're going to look at this. This is so weird. I like handwritten notes this week. It's only because my printer's out of ink. 
and I, I have a lot more narrative than what I normally have, so I wanted to make sure I got it down. Uh, yes, it is Christmas. So we're going to talk about the words of Christmas, words that are normally associated with Christmas each week uh, as we move to uh, Christmas. I do want to say that on Thursday, Christmas Eve, we will have our communion service and fellowship time. Uh, we normally have cookies and, and hot chocolate, those type of things afterwards, sing some carols, have communion together, and just a, a good little time of fellowship. We will do that again on Christmas Eve, as we always have, uh, so just remember that. But Christian, we're going to start with word one this week, and word one is peace. And so I put up here, Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. We're going to turn to Luke chapter 2, because we're talking about the words of Christmas, right? So we need to get to the Christmas story to make sure we get the right word, right? We're going to look at a couple of verses here, and this is going to be our foundation, but then we're going to go into a different set of stories to see this played out. So Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Yeah, that's like an understatement. Can you imagine being uh, out in the fields in the middle of the night? You know, a cattle rancher out there, you know, out there with your cows, middle of the night. And all of a sudden a group of angels show up. Well, I think I'd be greatly afraid too. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Yeah, right. <laughs> too late. Too late. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. That, I want you to, even though this isn't part of the lesson, I want you to remember that phrase right there. This will be to all people. This will be to all people. That was an anathema to them at that time because they were the chosen people. It didn't say this will be to God's chosen people. Uh, how about this to those who are diehard Calvinists? He didn't say this will be to God's elect. He said this will be to all people. So just throw that out there for you. This thing that is coming is available to everybody. May everybody won't accept it, but it is available to everybody. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, as if being scared of the one angel wasn't enough. Now a multitude show up. And this is where we're going to go. Verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Goodwill towards men. Peace is our word today. Peace is the declaration that was given when the announcement of Christ's birth was, was given to the shepherds. It was peace has now arrived on earth. And I want to talk about that because today, today, I believe peace is at a premium. Today, today it seems like the demand is high, but the supply of peace is low. You, you, you can't turn on the news. You can't open up a newspaper. You can't uh, listen to the radio and get a news broadcast without hearing the cry for peace, not the cry of peace. And on this day, on, on this, we can argue December, April, May, January, February, whatever day Jesus' real birthday was, we can argue that until he comes back. It doesn't matter. What matters is he was born, he was here. And hallelujah, we now have a Savior. That's what matters. But on this day, the angels were declaring that on earth, peace has arrived. So I can say this. If we are supposed to be the body of Christ and the embodiment of Christ, then we should be the peace on earth. And maybe that's what's showing in this Gallup survey. That people are more peaceful when they're engaged in church because the church is bringing peace. So praise God, for the most part, we are doing our job. Amen. 
But what we find is we find today in society, the majority of society is the antithesis of peace. It's turmoil. We are, we are struggling. We have, we have turmoil in our homes. We have turmoil in our families, turmoil at work, turmoil in our churches, turmoils in our streets. Everywhere we turn, we see turmoil. Yet this is the season that we are supposed to declare that peace is on earth. The Greek word for peace in, in Luke chapter 2 it is the word arene. And it means, may it be well with you. May, may you be whole through right relationships. May, may it be well with you. May you be whole. Can you, can, you, can you picture what the angel is saying? The angel is saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, wholeness. On earth, wellness. On earth, a right relationship that makes you complete. This is the call of America today. This is the call that I believe the world is crying out for. They are looking for the wholeness. They are looking for the wellness. They are looking for the completeness that comes through this relationship, this peace that has now arrived on earth. As I'm known to do, I, I like to destroy people's Christmas traditions. And so I want to tell you a little story, and then we're going to watch a little video. It's about three minutes long. Uh, for some people, it may be hard to watch, but I, I, you need to watch it anyway. On December of 1863, the American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow penned a poem called The Christmas Bells. In the 1880s, it was composed of music and turned into a Christmas carol. Two years prior to him writing this poem, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's wife was killed in a fire. She was innocently cooking, an ember came out, it caught her cotton dress on fire, and she succumbed to her burns. He found her on fire, and he came to help her, and he was so severely burned that he couldn't even go to her funeral. That's why when you see pictures of Longfellow, he has a beard because the beard is covering up the scars of the burns on his face. Well, that was 1861. 1863, his oldest son decides to do what was going on. History scholars, what happened in 1863? What was going on? The Civil War. So Longfellow's oldest son decides to join the Union Army. Early in the month of December 1863, 1863, he gets the, the, the notification that at the Battle of New Hope Church, his son was wounded. He was shot through the left shoulder by a Confederate bullet and it exited his right shoulder. It went straight through and nicked his spinal cord. And he was paralyzed. Christmas Day came with a dead wife, a paralyzed son, and sitting by himself at the table, eating, he heard this sound. He heard the church bells outside start to ring because it was Christmas Day. And that's why he penned the poem, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And I'm going to have Chris, uh, uh, Roger, can you turn the lights off, all the way, all the way off, please, both sets? Sure. Uh, Christian, go ahead. Not yet, not yet. We're going to watch a dramatization of uh, the poem. At the beginning, there's just words on the screen before anybody talks. It's pretty much the narrative I just gave you. And then it's going to go into the actual poem. But this poem is an amazing uh, example of what we're about to go into when we talk about peace and the battle between turmoil and peace. So, Christian, go ahead.
echoes break and wide and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, good will to men. And thought how as the day had come, the belfries of our crystal dome had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, good will to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, good will to men. The frontage block, the curse of mine, the cannon thunder in the sound, and with the sound, the carols drown of peace on earth, good will to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent and made forlorn the household form of peace on earth, good will to men. And in despair I bowed my head. It was the peace on earth I said, for hate the strong and mocks the sin of peace on earth, good will to men. You see, Longfellow's struggle to reconcile how can you ring peace when I'm dealing with this much hell? How can you ring peace when there's all this destruction? Yet at the end, in all that struggle and all that fight in the battle, he ends it with that last line, right? The last stanza. Then pilled the bells more loud. I love the fact that he made sure that these bells were louder than the other sound. The sound that resonated above everything else. The, the sound that resonated above the hurt of losing his wife, the, the fear of losing a son, the uncertainty of what life was going to be in a country torn apart by civil war. He said that even though that noise was loud, there was a louder noise that rose up and it said, God's not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail. The right prevail with peace on earth. Goodwill towards men. And you say, Pastor, okay, you're supposed to be preaching. You said the Bible. We're Bible focused. And here you're giving us a poem. Not the Bible. Are we going to give you the Bible? Judges chapter 6. Because what happened to Longfellow wasn't an isolated incident. It's happened before. And I would like to say it's happening again. Because I think there's people today. Today, who would, who would sit there and say, Pastor, how can you declare that there's peace on earth? Don't you know businesses are being boarded up? People people are being wrongly jailed, and this is happening in the street, and this is happening here. And, oh, my goodness, the drug overdoses are going crazy. The suicide rate is up, and you're saying there's peace on earth. Longfellow could have wrote this poem today. Amen. Because the situations we see today are exactly like it is here. But guess what? This is not an isolated instance. But this is what I want to show you. Judges chapter 6. Let's start in verse 11. We don't put my turn there, huh? We, used, we talked about Gideon the other day, right, when we talked about insecurities. But we're going to look at a different thing today when it comes to Gideon. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Orphrah, 
which belonged to Joash the Abizarite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles by which our fathers told us about? Saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Doesn't it sound like Gideon is saying the exact same thing that, that we see Longfellow saying some 3,000 years later? Roughly three millennia later, Longfellow saying the same thing. Okay, <laughs> okay, angel, you're telling me, you're telling me that hey, all the, the hey, the Lord is with you, you mighty man. Hey, good things. Hey, 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 God's with you, buddy. To Longfellow, that would be just like the bells clanging out, peace, 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 in the church towers. Gideon said the same thing. How do you want to tell me the Lord is with us? But we're being overrun by the Midianites every day. How do you want to tell me that I'm a mighty man of valor when I'm hiding in a wine press threshing wheat? And you want to tell me these things? You're trying to tell me there's peace. There ain't no peace here. You, you got the wrong address. You're a century too late. Or a century too early. This is what Gideon is saying. And I, I would say, I would say this. I would say this. That for us today, we are in the exact same situation. There are probably many people today who are turning into church services, either here, Facebook, it, wherever, whatever church they're at, and a pastor's preaching, they're, they're lighting Advent candles, they're talking about hope, they're showing big graphics of hope at the beginning of the service. All of these things they're talking about peace on earth, goodwill to men. They said, There ain't no peace in my house. Don't bring that stuff here. Pastor, how are you up there preaching peace? You don't know what goes on when I'm at home. It's war at home. It's war at work. And you're telling me peace. But let's see what happens. So we know, we know that, that, that Gideon says, all right. All right. If you are who you say you are, prove it. I'm going to bring out an offering, and I want you to make sure God gets it. So they, they, he makes some stew, puts it on a rock. The angel reaches his hand out to it, the staff, and the fire comes up from the rock, consumes it. So he says, hey, this is true. So we jump up to verse 23. And this is what the angel said to him in verse 23. Then the Lord said to him, peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Peace be with you. Don't fear. You're going to live. You're going to make it. That relationship may seem like it's in battle and going to fail, but you know what? Hey, you're going to make it. Again, the wrong shall fail, the right prevail in Longfellow's poem. You're going to make it. And then this is what Gideon did. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it the Lord is peace or Jehovah Shalom. To this day, it is still in Orphra of the Obezerites. Peace in the Hebrew, of course, we know is shalom. Those of you who've been watching the chosen with us, you see them. You know, Shabbat Shalom. This is their normal greeting. Is shalom to each person, and it is. It, it is. It is in Hebrew. It means a completeness, a wholeness, and being well with you. Very similar to what it is in the Greek, when we see the word arena in the New Testament. But this is what I want to show you today. These are the things I want to ask you. When Gideon wrote this, when Gideon said, you know what, I'm going to build an altar here, and I'm calling it Jehovah Shalom. How many victories had Gideon won? None. None. He knew he had battles to fight, but he hadn't fought one yet. <laughs> yet, even though the battle hadn't even begun, he was already declaring Victory, Amen. peace, Jehovah Shalom. <coughs> now we make mistakes sometimes when we sing songs with these Jewish words and stuff in it, 
and we say, you know, that, that, that he, he, God's my peace. That's not what it says. It says God is peace. You see, this is, this is the key. This is the key that Gideon had. This is, I think, the key that even Longfellow got at the end, that the revelation that he received. I don't know how he, I don't know what Longfellow's heart was when it came to Christ. I don't know. But somewhere he got this revelation that Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, is peace. It doesn't say the Lord acts peacefully. It doesn't say the Lord brings peace. What does it say? It says the Lord is peace. It is an attribute of who God is, not just the role he plays. See, we have regulated. Why, why do we have faith but not peace? Because we have relegated God to just being a peacemaker then instead of God being peace. He's not a peacemaker. He is peace. And I will submit to you there's a difference. And if you don't think there is, go home and start living like he's peace and see peace come to you. But if you're sitting around waiting for a peacemaker, you're going to wait for a long time. He is peace. Gideon recognized peace even in conflict. Even in conflict, he already knew God is peace. I may not like the battle. I may not like the odds. I may not like what I have to go through. I may not like what I'm dealing with. But God is peace. So I submit to you back when we get to that, that Luke verse and the angels, peace on earth. What they're saying is not, not some esoteric, holistic, give peace a chance, Beatles crap. I'm saying, they're saying there's a baby in a manger. Peace is now on earth. Not a feeling, but the embodiment of peace is sitting in a manger and you're going to find him. There is a difference. Because when we're just looking for a feeling of peace, the, the absence of conflict, Jesus is saying, I'm not the absence of con conflict. I am the embodiment of wholeness. I am the embodiment of completeness. I am the embodiment of wellness. I am the embodiment of right relation. Anything, if you go and you look up Shalom and Arene, he said, I am those things. So if you have a broken relationship and it needs to be made whole, who do you need? You need Jesus because he is peace. He is wholeness. He's not an agent of peace. See, this is what this is where we have gone wrong over the years. We have made it a, a job he performs instead of the person that he is. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 27. Well, let's go back to verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit, the Helper, is the paraclete, the person who's going to come along beside you in the Greek. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, because I'm not just giving you a role. I'm not just giving you some feeling. I am giving you the embodiment of peace. That's why I say, not the peace that the world gives. See, this is the problem. In church, we want the peace the world gives. We just want a manufactured environment where everybody's happy and sings kumbaya. Where the red states and blue states get along, where, where all the colors get along, and all, the, all the, the men and women are all happy, and everybody just jumping up and down and shouting and jumping, and yay, rainbows and lollipops. 
But Jesus says, peace I leave you. My peace. Not like the world gives. But my peace. My completeness. My wholeness. The fullness of me. You see, I submit today, and you're going to hear this theme go on through the rest of this Christmas season. And I believe that we have done a great disservice. We may be winning this battle when it comes to mental health, and we've seen people go to church. You know, their mental health is rising. But if the only reason why it's rising is we're giving them something to feel good about, have we really helped them? Or did we give them the peace that the world gives? Not the peace that Jesus brings. Do you, know, you, you catch the difference? There's, there's what the world gives and there's what Jesus brings. I want what Jesus brings because he brings wholeness, completeness. So I'm, I'm going to maybe ruffle some feathers and just say this. That when it comes to Christmas, there's a part of me that's kind of, you know, we talked about it yesterday, I think, you know haven't decorated the church this year or anything and I, I feel kind of bad about it because it's going to be nice we have a nice Christmas tree we got some nice ornaments from some kids in Washington this children's ministry who made these nice little ornaments for us we put it on there remember those little pine cone ones it's really nice it's pretty you know we got some poinsettias we put out you know we, we do the, the normal gimmick right but there's this other part of me that as I study this I think you know what I don't want peace like the world brings that I see familiar surroundings and I feel good about it I want the peace that he brings. The peace that understands that when it's all said and done, the true gospel is Jesus. We can sum gospel into one simple word, Jesus. Because peace has come to earth when he came to earth. Jehovah Shalom walked amongst us. Peace walked in our midst. Peace now lives in our lives in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to get to the point where we stop selling people a gospel of the world's peace. Feel good, look good, make things right, make things classy, shiny, bright, <coughs> twinkly lights all over the place. And get back to the brass tacks that the only thing, the only thing that's going to heal a hurting world. Let's look at, let's look at where Gideon was. They were overrun by the Midianites. He's having to hide in a wine press to thresh wheat because they're afraid that the Midianites are going to come steal it. Let's look at where those shepherds were when the angels came. They were in a field that was not theirs anymore. It was owned by Romans. They were under occupation by, by a, an outside force. What they didn't know was that in two years, their king was going to start demanding all their babies be killed. Yet an angel saying, peace is on earth now. Yes, all hell is about to break loose in Bethlehem, but peace is on earth. The same thing, Jehovah Shalom. Peace is here. What are we looking at today? What was Longfellow looking at at this time? Everything was mocking peace. Everything looked like the antithesis of peace to him. Yet at the end, God's not dead. And if God is peace, do you know what that means? Peace isn't dead. So we have the ability to be like Gideon that even though a battle is raging, even though a war is being fought amongst us, in us, and through us, we could build an altar and still say, Jehovah, Shalom. God is peace. Longfellow recognized it. Gideon recognized it. The angels declared it. In the midst of turmoil. What would happen if you walked into your home in the midst of a battle and you declared, God is peace? You want to fight? Fight. But you know what? Peace is here. What would happen at your place of work? What would happen with your relationships? 
If you as a believer, you as a child of the Most High God, a spiritual person, a person who embodies the Holy Spirit, if the world can declare when you walked in the door, peace is here. Peace is here. I'm going to give you another little 33, the series, plug. Roger makes this comment a lot of times on Saturdays. And sometimes he's here to hear it. Sometimes he's not here to hear it. But we have a person in our midst right now who I think lives this out. Roger, you know who he is? Yeah. I praise God. I praise God so much. You when Clifford know. walks in this room, Clifford doesn't walk into bells and whistles. Like some pro wrestling entrance with sparklers going off and laser lights, he walks in with his coffee cup, <laughs> his Bible, and sits down. But you know what walks in with him when he walks in? Peace. What would happen if we all brought that to every place we came to? What would happen? You want to talk about changing the world. You want to talk about changing the atmosphere. Changing the situation. Then, then you know what? Biden, Trump, it doesn't, God's not dead. That's what matters to me. Yes, these other issues, they're going to affect my, my everyday life. They're going to affect my paycheck or whatever. Yeah, well, okay, thank you. But at the end of the day, it cannot affect my peace because it cannot affect God. Amen. And God is peace. And if I work for him and he lives in me, then I have to be an agent of peace. And I should be the person who every room I walk into, peace should walk in with me. No victories is still declaring peace. You know, to this day, to this day, Quentin Wright, the Korean War, Trump came close. He came close. But you know, to this day, 1951, the Korean conflict officially started. And today is 2021. The Korean conflict is still going on today. Because they've never had peace. They have a piece of paper that says they won't shoot at each other. <laughs> you stay over there. I'll stay over here. And we won't shoot at each other. The world calls that peace. That's not what God calls peace because that's not wholeness. That's not completeness. That's separation. You see the difference? God wants us to be agents that bring things together. The North and the South, I think Wadsworth uh, Longfellow's poem because it happened in the Civil War. The two divides. Two parts of the nation battling with each other. Peace wasn't just the end of the gunfire. Peace was the reunification of the country. We need to be agents of reunification, agents of reconciliation, agents of completeness and wholeness. To truly do what God wants. And again, then we can truly have that peace that he leaves with us. His peace. Not the peace of the world. Philippians 4. This is what leads the Apostle Paul to pin these words to the church in Philippi. Starting in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. That, you know, that's something, right? The Apostle Paul said, he said you know, I'm going I'm to repeat myself. I understand. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds 
through Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. I wonder if that's what the people were thinking about when Gideon built that altar and said, Jehovah Shalom. Oh, really? Did you see the Midianites? They just attacked yesterday. And he says, no, no, no. I'm talking about a peace that passes understanding. A peace that even though I got a bad report on my father, even though I may struggle with thoughts that aren't always wholesome and, and helpful, I can still say I walk in peace. A peace that passes understanding. I wonder what the angel, what the shepherds felt that day when they heard that word. Really, peace? You know, we just got rid of the Hasmoneans. Before them were the Greeks, and now it's the Romans. Really, peace? Peace on earth? Really? I haven't had peace in my lifetime. Can you imagine these youngsters? These young folks in the room? Hey, Rachel, what year were you born? 99. Two years before 9 11. Yes. Her entire life, this nation has been at war. Can you believe that? Her entire life. October 2001 is when the United States declared war on terror and went into Afghanistan and Iraq. Two years old, her entire life <coughs> has been lived in war. What would you think if somebody came up to you and said, hey, guess what? There's peace now. Really? Did you see CNN last night? <laughs> did you watch Fox News, MSNBC? Did you see, the, you know, did you listen to NPR on the way in? Because uh, nothing on there sounded peaceful. This is what the angels were dealing with that day. But I wonder if we just make a little play on words. Maybe the angels are just declaring that peace has arrived on earth. Get ready. Get ready. Echoing the altar. You know, we, we have, normally we have our manger up here, and we, we, we talk about the manger is a representation of the altar. Because blood was spilled on the manger, right? God sacrificed his deity to step into humanity at the altar of the manger. And I wonder if we could look at that altar and put a label on it and say, Jehovah Shalom. Peace is here because of this. Let's endeavor as we go through this week to find those places where we can interject ourselves as agents of peace. Because I can tell you, there is a world out there it was probably like Longfellow at the beginning of his poem, not at the end of his poem. Again, we see the statistics. One in four young people in the United States of America since COVID has began statistically have contemplated or attempted suicide. Children's Hospital of Chicago reporting more adolescent suicide attempts since the beginning of COVID than in the last two years combined. Last night, in a political rally, people stabbed and shot. But I want to declare the same words that Longfellow declared. And echo Gideon's stance of Jehovah Shalom. And build the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail. The right prevail. The peace on earth. Goodwill towards men. Peace has come. It is our job now to be that agent of peace to every place we go. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
Lord, we thank you that in the midst of conflict, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of everything falling apart around us, you are still Jehovah Shalom. Lord, I thank you that you are still the embodiment of peace. And Lord, I thank you that you are giving us the strength through the infilling power of your Holy Spirit, through that helper that you have promised to come along beside of us, to now become agents of your peace, to become the examples of peace to all those around us, so that when people see us and they say, how in the world are you holding it together while everything's falling apart? We can say, I know peace. And when they ask us, well, how did you find peace? I can tell them. It's not a thing I found, but it's a person I know. Lord, let us be the people who speak to others about you. Let us be the people who bring peace to those around us. The completeness, the wholeness, the wellness, the right relations to all of those around us. Lord, for those who are walking in, in turmoil right now, Those who are going home to turmoil. Those who will wake up in the morning and go to a classroom full of turmoil. Those who will wake up tomorrow and go to a workplace full of turmoil. Today I pray that your Holy Spirit will fill them and guide them, direct them, come along beside them, fill them up and be that paraclete, that helper that reminds them that you are not dead and you will prevail because peace is on earth. Lord, I thank you and I praise you that you're enough. That this peace that you bring is the good news. This Jesus is the good news. Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor for everything that you're doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Peace. No matter Agents what's going of on peace. in the world around us. Exactly, Liv. No matter what's going on in the world if around us. If we have Jesus, we can have peace. Amen. Yeah. Amen. With Jesus, we have peace. Not a feeling, but the true peace. Not that he brings, but that he is. Amen. 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 All right. Hey, we won't go through the rest of the slides today, but hey, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he establish you. And may he forever give you peace. his peace. Mm -hmm. And look for it. And again, yeah. Yes. Look for it and bring it if you don't find it. In Jesus' name. If you receive that, say amen. 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 And I will see everybody Wednesday at 6 o'clock for dinner. It is going to be enchiladas with corn tortillas. <laughs> and episode four and five of the chosen and are you still working i know they're working on an amazing christmas blessing project so awesome thank you all